Thank you. Good morning to each and every one of you who took this opportunity to be with us here today. The Lord is good, always been good, and will forever be good. That is his eternal nature. Goodness radiates from him. You cannot defuse him from goodness. That is who he is. The Lord is good. And as various one of us this morning would have made proclamations and decree, I join to declare that the Lord is forever good. His grace and his mercies endure forever and forever. And this morning I purpose to speak to us on one of the most profound stories of goodness, grace, and mercies you will encounter in scripture. I want to share my screen with us this morning so we can all participate in this. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord is so good, so merciful towards us. Hallelujah. I purpose this morning to speak on the team. Purpose to speak this morning on the team, Lord's testimony. And there are a few things I want us to glean from that as we go through it together today. Because in so many different instances, we can relate to the story of Solomon Gomorrah. We are very much acquainted with that story. But at times, we are less so acquainted with the church that was in that city. We have never heard, and those of us who might be privileged to hear somebody talk about the church that was in Solomon Gomorrah, they will be able to give an appreciation for what I want to share with us this morning. But ever so often, when we speak of that city, we speak of it as God's judgment and all of these things and the wickedness that radiates from that city. And indeed, it was a wicked city. Indeed, it was a city that was deserving of God's divine judgment. But there was a church in the city nonetheless. Lot and his family had the light and the knowledge of righteousness. In other words, they are the ones who represent righteousness. They are the ones who should have represent hope for that city. And when I say this, I say to the mindset that Lord came from a position where he was educated, where he was enlightened, where he knew righteousness. But some of these things we'll get to it just now. But I want to draw our attention to the fact that unlike Noah, because this is another story in the Bible again that most of us can relate to from our days in Sunday school or different um, encounter we would have had with scriptures over the years. We cannot deny it. We, we know the story of Noah. But unlike Noah, Lot is not mentioned in scripture as one who preached righteousness. But both of them had some similarities in that they stand at a threshold where their testimony, their witness, where their involvement in the life of the community at that time was so critical in shaping and deciding the ultimate future or the ultimate destiny of that civilization. No one preached, and yet the people didn't repent, and God's judgment came. But there is no record of Lot being one who was passionate about preaching that gospel and witnessing. But I want you to bear with me this morning because I'm going to take us through something. And I just trust that everything stays steady this morning that you can glean from what I'm about to share with you this morning. But having said all of this, I found it interesting in the passage, and I know I have not shared with you yet the passage that I'm going to delve into this morning, but I just thought it's necessary to do what I'm doing now before we get to the text, so you will have a greater appreciation for the text. Interestingly, having not preached righteousness, having not witnessed 
as it were, to his fellow countrymen. He was inclined to condemn their wickedness. And this is something we are going to talk about. But let us just for a moment, and I will not endeavor to read to us this morning the entire chapter because it is a lengthy chapter. It is a lengthy chapter. But I want us to refer to the 19th chapter of Genesis, which gives a detailed discourse of Sodom and Gomorrah and God's judgment of that city. But I point us specifically to the 14th, the 14th verse of that chapter. And that is what I want to focus on. There are 38 verses in the 19th chapter of Genesis, but one verse I read to us this morning. Verse 14, and it says, And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But it seemed as one that mocked unto his son-in-law. So in other words, Lot tried to witness to them. He tried to share with them the impending judgment of God on that city. But here is his son-in-law who considered Lot weakness and Lot message and all of these things that Lot would have tried to indulge them and encourage them to get away from the judgment that was about to come on that city. And the Bible tells us that his son-in-law considered him to be a joker. They took his message as it were a joke. And that in itself is telling. But some of these things will definitely expound on them further. But let us look at some facts about Lot's life. And there are many more things that can be mentioned about the life of Lot. He is in scripture, a very pertinent character. Because from the story and from the genealogy of Lot, several things came. Some of them we'll touch on this morning. But I just want to take my time to give you an appreciation for the character we are going to speak about this morning. Lot was the nephew of Abraham. And the Bible tells us that after his father died, which is Abraham's brother, Abraham took him up under his tutelage and mentored him. So in other words, he walked with and was mentored by Abraham. The teaching that Abraham would have given to his own son Isaac, he would have passed on some of those teachings to Lot also, because Abraham was a righteous man. So Lot was well mentored, he was well trained. In other words, Lot was brought up in church. He was blessed with several things. The Bible tells us he had great servants and great livestock. And as a result of these things and the rivalry which developed between his herdsman and Abraham herdsman, he eventually left the city of Sodom, left Abraham, sorry, and pursued to venture elsewhere. So he had great wealth. The fact is, he wanted more. He wanted more. And I want to implore upon us this morning, we have to be careful with our egos. We have to be careful with our ambition. We should not let them drive us contrary to the path that God will have us to follow. He wanted more. He left the company of Abraham and went into Sodom with many things. And as we will see throughout the discourse today, he came out empty. He came out with nothing. He went into Sodom with so many things. But at the end of it, he came out only with his life. I submit to us this morning, we should never stick to compromise with evil. You will never win when we negotiate with evil or compromise otherwise. It is always a lose-lose situation. And the story of Lot speaks expressly to that. Compromise just don't work. Furthermore, we glean from the passage in Genesis chapter 19 that Lot had a love, a proclivity for the world. 
He was attracted. He was lured into the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. We need to pay attention to those things that we have proclivity to, the things that will cause us to leave the presence of God or leave the company of godly men and pursue after because what we think might bring satisfaction, what we think might bring greater wealth and greater accomplishment and all of these things, at the end of the day, we might realize how falsely informed we have been. I submit to us for Lot made choices that were dictated by fleshly desires. He did not give occasion for the spirit to lead him. He did not give occasion for the spirit to direct him. He did not seek the counsel of God, but he chose to choose and make decisions based on selfish and fleshly desires. I pay particular attention and it is concerning in so many different ways to me. There is always a lot and an Abraham in the church. There is always, because the Bible says the wheat and the tears will grow together. And there is no turning from the fact, even Jesus himself in the power of the wheat and the tears, he talks about it. So in other words, there is always a lot and an Abraham in the church. And while one is walking away from God's presence, there is always somebody else that is walking in it and walking into it. I say that again. Even within the local church, while some are walking out and becoming weary and frustrated, there are others of us that are walking in his presence and walking into his presence. There is always a lot and there is always an Abraham. While one is driven by fleshly and carnal desire, someone else is driven by the spirit. And I say, you got to stand even as we would have listened to that rendition from Danny McCockin and his team. We got to stand. While one is driven by the flesh, there are those of us that are driven by the spirit. While one value earthly possession as Lord need, there is our, always an Abraham who is laying up treasures in heaven. So do not be fooled, do not be dismayed by your pursuit of righteousness because there is a reward for righteousness. God is your rewarder and we cannot separate him from being a rewarder. That is his nature. He rewards I submit to us this morning, there is always a good example to follow. There is always a good example to follow in the church, but our perspective and our desire dictates what we see and follow. So many Christians this day in which we live are only seen and are only exposed to the negativity. But if our perspective are proper, if our perspective and our desire is in the right place, certainly we will see good examples. Certainly we will see good standards that we can emulate and follow and pursue a lifestyle that is pleasing and acceptable before God. So I say again this morning, there is always a lot and an Abraham in the church. And we have to be careful as to who we allow ourselves to follow, as to who we allow to be our mentors and so forth. The Bible is very clear on that issue. Beware of the company you keep. Beware of the company you keep. Once in the company of Abraham, Lot was out of trouble. Once in the company of Abraham, he had protection, he had leadership, he had the abiding presence of God with him. But outside of Abraham's stewardship and company, he found himself in trouble. And I want to submit to us this morning, especially to the young ones that are listening to me this morning, stand your ground, stay put, stay in the presence of good Christian company. Outside of that, there is trouble, there is destruction, there is no hope this morning. 
Lot is a testimony of all these things, and that is why I'm talking to us on the topic this morning. Lot's testimony, because we will come to it just now, and we will see some pertinent things as to how the story of Lot relates to the present church today. Lord chose to remove himself from Abraham company. He did not have to. And I'm saying to us this morning, we do not have to remove ourselves, even though at times there might be conflicts and issues that we need to solve among ourselves as a local church, as the body of Christ. It is no excuse for us to leave church this morning. Yes, Lot and Abraham had their issues and the herdsmen with their cattle and all of these things, but it was not an excuse to leave the presence of God this morning. It's not an excuse because you have an issue with a pastor or you have an issue with a brother, it's not an excuse for you to leave the company of godly people this morning. Abiding in the presence of godly company is critical. It is necessary. You cannot make it on your own as much as you think you are strong as much as you think you pray and you do all of those things the body of christ is designed to function as a body and not a standalone part you need one another we need one another and so many times the church is being divided and that's asunder because we allow selfish and petty things to create division in the church and have lot give place for the spirit to lead him, he would never left the company of Abraham. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. The church cannot find purpose, satisfaction, nor peace in the world. Lord believe he could have, but paid dearly. The church of Christ was not designed to find its purpose. The church of Christ was not designed to find its satisfaction and peace in the world. But Christ said, he gave those things. Our peace comes from God himself, not worldly pursuits and not worldly desires. The church peace, the church purpose, the church satisfaction, the church contentment is only found in the the church savior is only found in the church founder which is jesus christ himself abide and stand the ground this morning do not let nothing separate you from the body of christ because outside of the body of christ as lot would have learned there is no hope there is only destruction watch what is happening to us these days watch what is happening around us watch what is happening in the world around you can you find peace in your workplace today? Can you find peace in the world today? I submit to us this morning, our peace, our satisfaction, and our purpose are only found in Jesus Christ and him alone. I ask the question this morning, what are you giving up church for? What are you giving up church for this morning? Why are you giving up this morning? Where are you going? What is the hope? What is the point? Does it worth it this morning to turn your back on church this morning? Does it worth it? I find so many persons are becoming despondent, discouraged, turning their back on the church this morning. Why are you giving up? It doesn't worth it. Just excuse me, a little, a little technical difficulty. I lost my screen, but I will go ahead preaching and talking. When I get it sorted out, I will come back. But if you are seeing the screen, um, I trust that you are seeing it. Hallelujah. Twice the church intervened to rescue Lot. Twice the church, and I speak to Abraham as being the church. Twice. Once he was aware of it, and the other he was not. Do you know what the church is doing for you this morning? Even when you malign it, even when you criticize it, even when you ridicule, even when you do everything in your power to stop the work of Jesus Christ here on earth? Do you know what the church is doing for you this morning? 
We ought to be aware of the company that we keep. Godly company and abiding in the presence of godly company is so critical, so critical for us. Lord thought he could have survived and find peace and purpose in life outside of the church. But as we are acquainted with the story of Lot, we realize the sad reality of the decision that Lot would have made. There was no peace. There was no satisfaction. There was no comfort, no hope outside of the church. The church is where the Christian, the church is where the people of God will find hope and peace and comfort. So I just want to encourage us this morning especially in the times in which we are living now to stay put to continue to stand our ground stand our ground somebody this morning there are some pertinent lessons from lots life that i want us to be aware of some interesting lessons from lots life love for this world will cost us dearly Love for this world will cost us dearly. Lot had many choices where he could have settled. He could have settled somewhere else outside of Sodom and Gomorrah, but he chose to settle in the world. And somehow I find so many of us as Christians are choosing to settle in a place that is not conducive, in a place that will stifle our growth. We are making choices that are detrimental. And so many times we are quick to blame the enemy. So many times we are quick to blame the devil for the decisions that we make but it is our choice Lord could have settled somewhere else we are settling for less too often too often the church is settling for less he left the company of God he left Abraham's church. he left Abraham leadership he left Abraham counsel for the law of the world and today, I cannot help to ask myself, what is it we are leaving church for this morning? What is it we are leaving good counsel for this morning? For the pleasures of the world. For the pleasures of the world. Moses said he rather suffer affliction with the children of Israel than enjoy the pleasures of Egypt. The church must come back to the place where it stands, its ground, persevere, hold on, encourage. This time in which we live, we cannot allow ourselves to be divided. We cannot allow petty and simple things to separate us. The church needs unity. We need to function in unison. And that is the call this morning. Let us come together. Lord allowed the flesh to dictate his choice. He allowed the flesh. He looked to the plains of Jordan and he saw with his eyes there was water, there was pastures for his cattle. But if he had only opened his spiritual eyes, he would have seen the different side of the coin. So much of us are only seeing one side of the coin because we are only seen with our carnal eyes this morning. Had Lord gave occasion to his spiritual eyes, he would have seen the destruction that awaited him and his family in Sodom and Gomorrah. Open your spiritual eyes this morning. As you make choice in your day-to-day -day life, do not choose like Lot. Do not choose by Lot neither, but give occasion for the Spirit of God to lead you, for the Spirit of God to direct you this morning. Lot settled for less. He was never satisfied. And I found that very instructive this morning. And I know you may not be able to see the screen and the slides, but hold this morning. Hold your ground. Do not be discouraged. And hear the counsel of my words to you this morning, because I'm certain it is the Lord's message to you. Lord, Lord, settle for less. Peter said he was tormented by the sin and the wickedness in the city. And so many Christians, we are tormented in our spirits. We are tormented in our environment. We are tormented where we are. But we are not taking that bold decision to rise up and say enough is enough. 
Move out and find company that will encourage you. Find company that will pursue after righteousness. Look at the story with Lot. Living in a city that was wicked, did so many great abominations against Jehovah. And look at him in that city. He could not have left the city. He settled in the city, even though he was uncomfortable in the environment he was in. I want to ask of us this morning, are you comfortable where you are? Is your soul being troubled and tormented where you are this morning? Do not be like Lot this morning and remain in that state of torment. Remain in that state where every day your spirit is oppressed, where every day your spirit is troubled. Find a place. The Bible declares the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The name of the Lord is a place of refuge. Find a comfort zone in the name of Jesus this morning where you can serve him, where you can and walk right before him. Lord chose to settle for less than Sodom. He, he chose to settle for a position that would not allow him to have a relationship. And I want to talk to those of us this morning who are so into our careers. And I'm not bashing careers this morning because we all have our careers. We all have our part to play in nation development. But are we compromising? What are we trading for this morning? We need to weigh our priorities. We need to set our agenda in a manner that will not allow us to miss out on the most important things of life. But there is something greater than the pleasures of Egypt this morning. There is something greater and something better than the attraction of Sodom and Gomorrah that drew a lot into the city. Stay put with me this morning. Stay put with me this morning. I submit to us this morning. I submit to us this morning, and I want to take my time as I go through it because I know you may not be able to see the slide as I share with you today. But I submit to us this morning, the cost is simply too high. The cost of leaving church is simply too high. The cost of leaving godly company is just too high. Lot learn the hard way. We today do not have to pay the price that Lord would have paid. Do not leave godly company to pursue the attraction and the lust of the world this morning. Stand your ground. Say like the three Hebrew boys, Oh King, we are not careful to serve you in this matter. We are not careful because even if God do not come through for us, we are still not going to bow. The issue I find today, so many of us do not have that personal commitment because personal commitment says that even if the Lord doesn't come through, you see there is two things. There is faith. I know he will come true. I know he will come true. Faith says, I know he's going to come true. Knowledge says, I know and I believe he's going to come true because he did it for me before. But personal commitment says, even if he do not come true for me, I am going to serve him nonetheless. Even if he do not come true for me, I am not going to bow before you, O King Nebuchadnezzar. Where is personal commitment? And we talk about Christianity. So many times we talk about faith. I am going to trust in him. So many times we talk about knowledge and we testify because testimony in the most part is the expression of knowledge, what the Lord would have done for us. So all of these things is good, but there is another dimension to it, which is commitment. Even if it doesn't come through, even in those circumstances, I am still going to pray. I am still going to persevere because I am not going to bow to sin this morning. I'm not going to bow to the attractions of this world and worldly pleasures today. For there is something better. I am committed. 
I am committed. I am committed. And I trust that each and every one on this platform this morning can say as I am, I am committed. And even if the Lord doesn't come through in this 99th hour, I have been too much. I have been too, too, too much. Try to bow now. I am too committed. I submit to us this morning the cost of leaving, the cost of quitting, the cost is simply too high. The love of this world is costing the church too much. I say it again this morning. The love of the world is costing the church too much. For God said this morning, the church has become lovers of the world and it is costing the church. It is costing the church too much. We are too busy to pray. We are too busy to pray. We are too tired for family. We are too tired for church. We are too tired for God. Worse yet, we are too entangled and too compromised to witness effectively the message of salvation to a dying world who needs to hear. We are to compromise. What is happening to the church today? What is the position of the church today? I look around and I'm concerned. I look and I'm very much concerned this morning. The cost is simply too high. The cost is simply too high. And I ask this morning, I ask this morning, is the cost of worldly pursuit worth it? Is the cost of your worldly pursuit worth it this morning? What you have to give up to gain the things you want in the world this morning, is it worth it today? Have we weighed the consequences of our action this morning? Have we weighed it properly? Have we weighed the consequences, what we are giving up? Have you taken pen and paper and list down the things you are going to give up to achieve what you want in the world this morning? And if you did, I'm asking you this morning, is it worth it? Can you afford to give up those things to gain the pleasures of the world this morning? Will we be disappointed when it is all over? When we get it, when we have it, when we attain? excellence in our workplace when we attain excellence in our careers and we look back over our life can we say it was worth it this morning can we say we have made the best choice this morning lord paid dearly for the choices that you would have made and we cannot as a church make the same mistakes as lord would have made the cost is simply too high. It is simply too high. I ask the question because it is important what our children are going to do to us at the end of the day because we fail to attend to them spiritually. What our children, and it does not have to be our biological children only, but what those that are going to come after us, what are they going to do to us? The Bible makes it clear that after Lot would have left the city and the Lord destroyed the city, his two daughters among all people would have jumped him and raped him. Are our children going to do the same thing to us because we choose to pursue after worldly pleasure and do not train them up in the way that they should go? The cost is too high this morning, church. We cannot afford to go on that path. We simply cannot afford to make that mistake. I submit to us this morning. I submit to us this morning. Spiritual compromise. Spiritual compromise don't work. Spiritual compromise just cannot work. And I ask the question because I'm seeing something that is happening in our world today. Person think that they can compromise and come out at the end of it successfully. I can go into negotiation with the enemy and win. You just would not. And I ask the question purposefully. 
If those of us who think we can compromise with the world and be able to win the world to Christ. I asked of us this morning, who have not led to God? Who serve God on account of Lord example? Once you compromise, you are not going to be a witness to anyone, the gospel, unto repentance. Too many Christians falsely think they can adopt the habits of the world, serve the system of the world, and win the world to Christ. It just do not work like that. They laugh at us. They make fun of us. Here is the irony of the story we read from the 14th verse in Genesis. There is it. That Lot went to witness to his son-in-law, persons he knew, persons he loved, person whom he cared about. He witnessed to them impending judgment, immediate judgment, and his son-in-law considered him to be a joker. And here is the church today and our workplaces. Wheresoever we interact and engage with other persons, we are trying to tell them that the Lord is coming. We are witnessing and they are taking it for a joke, all because we have compromised. Lord, son-in-law, people who Lord knew, people who Lord cared about, he tried to tell them, repent, turn from your evil ways. But his son-in-law considered it to be a joke. And I submit to us this morning, how many Christians, how many Christians falsely think they can adopt the habits of the world and serve the system of the world and still win the world? No, sir. No, sir. I was talking to a young man not too long ago, and he's telling me he have to become like them. I said, you don't have to become like the world to win the world. You have to become like Christ to win the loss. You could never become like the world to win the world. Become more like Christ. And that is a mistake that Lord would have made and the church is making the same mistake today. The church is making the same mistake. I ask the question, is anyone coming to Jesus Christ on account of your example? Who have you led to the Lord? Because I'm certain this morning, Lord have not led nobody to the Lord. Nobody has not led to the Lord. At the end of his life, his own two children turned around and raped him, as I was saying to us earlier. And I asked the question, and now that you can hear me, and I think you can see part of the screen also, I will ask the question again, what is it our children are going to do to us at the end of the day? Because we fail to teach them, because we fail to direct them. I submit to us, some of us, our children, they will turn back and rape us. Like Lord daughters did to him, all because we fail and we give priority to worldly pursuit over things of righteousness. Let us not make the same mistake this morning. Let us not make the same mistake this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Spiritual compromise. It is a choice often driven by our own selfish desire. You don't have to compromise this morning. You don't have to compromise to the enemy. The legal leaven, the Bible tells us, it leavens the whole lump. Lord did not immediately settle in Sodom. And as I read this passage in preparing to speak to us this morning, it was very clear to me because before that, I thought Lot would have left immediately and went into Sodom. But Lot did not went into Sodom and settled there immediately, but was gradually baited by the city's attraction. Be careful. Be careful. The devil is cunning. The devil will show you from the beginning what looks good, what looks attractive. But at the end of it, there is deception. He is never for truth. He is always deceptive and cunning. He will only show you one side of the story. So he showed Lot. 
the plains of Jordan, the short roads, the pastures and the water, and all of those things. And because Lord did not give occasion to see with his spiritual eyes, Lord only saw the water for the cattle. He only saw the feed for the cattle. What is it you are seeing this morning? Open your spiritual eyes and see the reality of things for what they are. Do not be deceived this morning. Do not be deceived by the lust and the love of the world. There is something about it you need to see and you can only see with your spiritual eyes. Let us look at it this morning. All that the enemy needs to know is what plane of Jordan that will entice you to come to Sodom this morning. You see, the devil will not come and just take you and show you the end story. He will present and bait you. And that is the story of Lot this morning. He was baited by his own selfish desire for more, for more. What is it are we being baited by this morning? What bait are we taking this morning from the enemy? What enticement are we taking from the enemy this morning? We have to be careful today because, because there is always another side to the story. Lord, allow his flesh to choose. Do not allow your flesh to choose this morning. Give occasion for your spirit. Give occasion for the leading and the direction of God this morning. The church story today so much represents the experience of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. The church is saying today, when I can go, I can participate. There is nothing wrong. The devil will tell us, and the surfaces may seem that there is nothing wrong to it, but the end of is destruction. The end of is death. The end of is nothing good for you. Be careful. I, I just want to take this moment, this morning, to speak to that issue. Because it is so important that I share this with us this morning. Temptation. Temptation is made up of two components. Temptation is made up of desire, and it is made up of enticement. Satan do not bring desire to the table. Satan do not bring desire to your life. You bring desire, the enemy brings enticement. Each and every one of us have desire. Desire comes from us. Desire is given by God. Every desire is God given. A desire only becomes corrupt when we allow evil enticement to fulfill them. But desire is given by God himself. We are made with desire. That is how God made us. But here is it, here is it this morning. And that is what I want to show the church. We ought to be careful. I'm encouraging us, encouraging us this morning. We ought to be careful because Satan knows we have desire. He will come with counterfeit enticements. He will come with counterfeit enticement. And some of us this morning, you have desires and you're praying to God to satisfy this desire. Can I say to you this morning, hold your ground. Do not fall for Satan counterfeit this morning. Satan, know what is it you're praying for this morning. He know what is it you're trusting God for this morning. But he will seek to create a counterfeit so that you can satisfy a God-given desire in an illegitimate manner and it becomes sin. You are praying and you are trusting God. And stop me to us this morning. Hold your ground. Lot wanted more for his cattle. There was no issue with you wanting more to provide for your children. There was no issue with you wanting more in your career. These are God-given desire, the drive you have, the passion you have. It is good. It is good. But do not give occasion to satisfy those desires through illicit means this morning. Do not give okay for it, because that is how the enemy operates. All the enemy needs to know, what is it your desires are? And he definitely will come with a counterfeit mechanism to satisfy. Do not give occasion to that this morning.
morning. Because as I said, spiritual compromise won't work. They cannot negotiate with the enemy and become a winner. But what is so pertinent from the story of Lot? What is so pertinent this morning that I really want us to focus on? Because this is the main point I want to get to this morning. The great tragedy, the great tragedy, and not just in Sodom and Gomorrah, but there's a great tragedy in our world today. And here is the tragedy before us this morning. The church knows the Lord is coming, just like Lord did. Lord had a divine messenger sent to him. And we know also, but here is this tra the tragedy this morning. Just like Lot, we know the Lord is coming. The church knows the Lord will judge the world. The church wants the world to listen to his message this morning. But the world rejects the testimony and account of the church compromise. It's a tragedy, a great tragedy that this world is going to die all because some of us compromise. I read the story of Lot and I could feel the pain this morning because here is a man going to say to his son-in-law, leave the city, get out because the Lord is going to judge that city. And here is his son-in-law laughing at him this morning. Who is it are you honestly witnessing to today? Who is it are you honestly witnessing today? And this person is just laughing because you compromise. Compromise just don't work. And here is, here is it this morning. Here is it this morning. How can the church honestly witness to the world about heaven when we are more entangled in a sinful world than some unsafe persons? How could have lot? Witness to the seasons of Sodom and Gomorrah when he himself was entangled, when he himself was caught up in the life of Sodom and Gomorrah. So busy. And that is why I said to us, the cause is simply to hide this morning. The cause is simply to hide this morning. How could have not witness? when he himself is so entangled. I just want to say to us this morning again, a great tragedy. And I know you've seen it on the screen before you, but I say it again nonetheless, the church knows the Lord is coming. The church knows the Lord will judge the world. The church wants the world to listen to his message, but the world rejects the message and the testimony and account of the church compromise. That is a tragedy. That is a tragedy this morning. We have to pay attention. A great tragedy. A great tragedy. Look at it this morning. And I asked myself when I read and I, I prepared to speak to us this morning. I understood clearly that Lord had all. Lot had all that it took to witness, to lead at least 50 souls to God and spared that city from judgment. Sometimes we think of the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah, but my concern this morning is to speak to the church this morning. The city of Sodom and Gomorrah did not have to perish. The Lord made an occasion to save the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot had all that it took to witness and lead at least 50 souls to God and thus fear the city from judgment. He was discipled by Abraham. He had resources. He had the support to his family. I ask of us this morning, what more do we need as a church in Grenada to witness the gospel to someone and save their soul from damnation and judgment this morning? I ask it this morning to each and every one of us. I ask it to myself because as I prepared this morning, as I prayed in preparation to speak to us, 
I understand the importance of the message, the importance of this message. And I said, Father, speak to me before you speak to them. Speak to me. Let this message resonate in me because in my own life, I need to improve. I want this message as much as it is for the church. It is for me first and foremost because I need to ask myself, honestly, what more do I need to witness the gospel? What more do I need to tell somebody? After all that the Lord would have done for me, after all that the Lord would have given to me, I cannot use shyness again as an excuse. I cannot use that I'm too busy again for an excuse. I submit to us that the church do not have no excuse for not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and leading somebody to repentance and saving the soul from damnation and judgment of the Lord this morning. What more? I want us to ponder this morning. I hope you could prepare and build up in your mind mental images of the story of Genesis chapter 19 of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. Lord had it, and here is the angels making petition with Abraham. If I could only find 50 souls. At the end of the day, it came down to 10 souls. And there was a church in Sodom and Gomorrah. I submit to us before we cast Sodom, before we speak evil of Sodom. Look at us in the mirror this morning before we speak evil over Grenada. Before the church speaks and condemn and talk about the wickedness in Grenada. I submit to us that we look at ourselves in the mirror this morning because there was a church in Sodom and Gomorrah. There was a church in Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot and his family was there to be a light. Lot and his family was there to be salt in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Isn't there a church in Grenada? Isn't there a church in Grenada? And if the church in Grenada do not rise up and preach, if the church in Grenada do not rise up and represent the cross and the cause of Jesus Christ, do not dare speak of the evil in the land if you are not doing your work as a Christian this morning. Because Lot, read it in Genesis chapter 19, you must realize you would have realized from Genesis chapter 19 the accusation that the citizens of Sodom and Gomorrah would have laid against Lot. Note it after we finish this morning. Go and read the chapter. And I submit that you will find therein that the citizens of Sodom and Gomorrah said to Lot, Who is this fellow? Who is this fellow? You came in this city and do not stand your ground. You came in your city, in the city, and you did not represent the message of righteousness. So how dare you now could come and tell us about our lifestyle? Who are you? And I'm certain that so many persons in Grenada are making scorn and reproach of the church this morning because of the church. Because of the church. It's sad. It's definitely sad. Because the Lord knew that Lord had the capacity to win and to witness for him in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. The city of Sodom and Gomorrah could have been saved had the church in that city do what it was called to do. I ask this morning, as I prepare to bring it home in a while, what more do we need to witness the gospel to someone that the soul be saved from judgment this morning. I want to ask the question again. I asked it earlier, but I think it's necessary that I ask that question again. What is it our children are going to do to us? What is it are they going to do to us this morning? After we have run our rest, after we cannot do as much as we can now, the generation that is coming after us. It hurts my heart to read in Genesis that a man who should have been a righteous man, that his own daughters turned around and raped him. His own daughters, as a 
Christian this morning? What is it our children are going to do to us? And can we blame them? Can we blame them? Can we lay the accusation at their feet? I submit to us this morning, if we do not do what we are called to do, we dare not open our mouths and blame them, but bow on our knees and make intercession on their behalf. And we pray for them. Don't let our children and those that come after us rise up to rape us. And I use that word not to speak of sexual abuse, but I use that word to speak of abuse in any manner we have to be careful and the lord is speaking to us this morning because we are at a critical juncture as a church in this nation and we see the testimony of lot i bring it home just now bring it home the great tragedy the great tragedy i asked myself this morning what was lord doing in sodom what is the church doing in the world this morning? Why Lot had to go to Sodom? Why Lot had to go to Sodom? Why the church have to go into the world this morning? What are you doing in the world this morning? Are you preaching? Are you witnessing? Or are you otherwise representing Christ to the world today? What is it that you're doing in the world? Why are you giving up church for the world this morning? As I speak to us, I speak with a heavy heart. And if you find I'm coming across emotion, yes, I am, because I am burdened by it, because I'm seeing my friends, I'm seeing pastors who grow up in church with me, that forsake the cross. Lord went into Sodom with so many things this morning. He came out wounded. He came out bruised. He came out empty today. Oh my God, this morning. So many of my friends that would have backslide. So many persons you know this morning that would have given up. They would have turned their back. Look at them this morning. Look at them today. Look at them. Look at Lot. No difference this morning. You take all that the Lord gave to you. I see so many persons. The Lord blessed them. The Lord increased them. They took everything like the prodigal son and they went into the world. But I said to us this morning, at the very beginning, that the story of Lot is a story of God's grace and mercies. The story of Lot is a story of God's grace and his mercies. He came through and he delivered Lot. But Lot came out with nothing. Can I submit to us this morning? You may not be as fortunate as Lot. You may not even come out with your life. What is it the church is doing in the world? I bring it home with this final slide. I bring it home with this final slide. Don't be fooled this morning, church. Don't be fooled this morning. Don't be fooled this morning. The law of the world cannot be compared to what God has in store for you. Stay put. Do not compromise. Lord should have remained with Abraham. Lord did not have to go into Sodom. Yes, might have issues where you are. Yes, and such is life. You may have challenges in your local church. You may have challenges in your workplace. But stay put. Stand your ground. Do not compromise. Do not give up. The law of this world cannot be compared to what God has in store for you. Stand your ground. Look at it on the screen before you. While Lot was miserable, in a sinful environment, Abraham was prospering in God's will and promise. Some of you think you can leave the church and go out 
and prosper. But I submitted to us earlier that the church can only find peace, satisfaction, and purpose in Jesus Christ. While Lot thought he would have prospered in Sodom and Gomorrah, it was Abraham in the church that was prospering. And I want to say to some of us this morning, who is at the church hall of giving up, stand your ground. Stand your ground because after you give up and you go out in the world, you will come back to the same church. And you will see many faithful saints still standing, still serving God. Because we understand that our purpose can only be fulfilled in Jehovah God this morning. Don't give up this morning. Don't compromise this morning. Don't be fooled. As I bring it home with this last two points. Don't be fooled. Lord, escape was a divine providence. Lot escape was divine providence. From his Moabite descendants came the lineage and the lineage of Christ. So even if Lot messed up, God had divine purpose. But do not think that you go out in the world and suffer as Lot would have. You may not be as lucky to come out with as much as your life. Church, before I turn you over to us this morning, we had some technical glitches, but this message was so important to me. Because as I look around the world today, I see so many persons, especially in this time, are giving up, they are compromising, they are thinking that the Lord has forsaken them. The daughters of Lot raped him because they thought essentially that the Lord has forsaken them. I just want to encourage somebody this morning. The Lord has not forsaken you. And even if you think that the Lord has forsaken you, I encourage you this morning to find faith and purpose as the three Hebrew boys did. Even if the Lord do not deliver us, I am committed I am committed. I wish somebody could say with me this morning, even if the Lord do not come true for me today, I am committed. I am not going to bow. I purpose this morning that I am not going to sit in Sodom and tomorrow. I am not going to leave church. I am going to persevere, even if it costs me my 